We're about to take a journey back in time to talk about a dark and truly appalling story. A bigger than Hollywood tale full of cheating, deceit, fraud, and kidnapping. Our story begins on November 2nd, 2016, when a 34-year-old woman named Sherry Papini disappeared while out jogging a mile from her home in Redding, California. She reappeared three weeks later on Thanksgiving Day, November 24th, having been reportedly freed by her captors at 4.30 that morning, still wearing restraints on the side of County Road 17 near Interstate 5 in Yolo County, about 150 miles south of where she had disappeared. The case garnered major media attention, with national law enforcement experts reporting doubts or otherwise baffled as to the unlikely details and inconsistencies of the reported abduction. Sherry's husband, Keith Papini, first became concerned when he returned from his job at Best Buy on November 2nd, 2016, and could not find his wife at home. He eventually used the Find My iPhone application to locate her cell phone and earbuds at the intersection of Sunrise Drive and Old Oregon Trail, about a mile from their home. According to Shasta County Sheriff Tom Bosenko, Papini said she was held by two Hispanic women who took steps to keep their faces hidden from her, either by wearing a mask or by keeping Papini's head covered and her arms restrained. Sherry showed signs that she was physically abused during her captivity. Her nose was broken and her hair cut off, was branded with red hot metal on her right shoulder, and weighed only 87 pounds when she was released. At the time, the sheriff said it was still an active investigation and authorities were, quote, looking for a dark colored SUV with two Hispanic females armed with a handgun. The sheriff indicated that there was sensitive information not being released at that time. However, detectives had authored close to 20 search warrants and they said that they were examining cell phone records, bank accounts, email, and social media profiles. Investigators declined to discuss what prompted them to file the search warrants or why detectives had traveled out of state. Authorities also declined to comment on the specific details of the ongoing investigation, but reported that they were actively pursuing the case. In November, while Papini was still missing, authorities executed more than 12 search warrants in Michigan with the FBI now providing assistance. Sherry was found with both male and female DNA on her, neither of which matched her or her husband. The FBI ran the samples through the Combined DNA Index System, also known as CODIS, and found no matches at the time. However, roughly four years later, Sherry was brought back in for more questioning about her case. It was here that it was revealed that they had discovered some incredibly important information relevant to her case, such as a DNA match, and it was here that the truth about her disappearance started to see the light of day. This is the interrogation of Sherry Papini. Incredibly long road, yeah. um, but some stuff's come up. So over, we've always had the, the DNA out there in the world. Um, Sorry, Tom, before we get too far, yeah. obviously, yeah. just like always, thank you for coming. We appreciate you taking the time to come talk to us. Yeah. As always, your presence here is voluntary. Yeah. Um, you can go at any time. <laughs> and uh, all we want is truthful statements because it's a, a crime to lie to federal officers. Wow, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, forget about that part. <laughs> so, um, so there's always been DNA out there, mm -hmm. um, and we we've, we've done testing after testing. We've gone out to like the Parabon, which is a private company that does all like cool. the the genetics, and we've just hit wall after wall after wall. Um, but recently, um, we found some a familiar DNA hit. So what that does, it it just tells us it came from a certain person, so um, like the mother or the father or a, a son or an uncle or however that is, it just hits that like somewhere in this family tree mm -hmm. um, is where the DNA comes from. As the interview begins, the detective lets both Keith and Sherry know that there has been a familial DNA match. Familial DNA searches simply identify potential relatives of an alleged perpetrator. A familial DNA search result is only a lead that is then followed up and investigated until a DNA sample of the suspect is obtained and tested. In short, they know what family the DNA came from, and standard investigation tactics can and will help them narrow down the list of potential suspects. 
also, it may seem odd that Keith, Sherry's husband, is here in the room for this interrogation. But as investigators will soon mention, Keith has been a part of this investigation from the beginning. His presence isn't an oversight, but rather a calculated move that will later be used to manipulate Sherry. Okay, so with that, we open up the investigation. We go into who could it be um, within the family. Um, so once we started opening up those doors and looking through those the family members and just trying to see Facebook stalking them, um, criminal histories, um, just that normal investigation that we do once we start looking into things, we started finding some interesting things. Okay. Um, so one of the things that came out to us well, if you, is there anything in there that looks of interest or notable? Interest or... And that's an awkward photo. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. So the table, uh, the picture's a little grained out. So there's, I mean, to me, I see a table there that somewhat looks like something you've described to me in the past and then I see wood paneling mm -hmm. talking about the room yeah we noted both of those things back in August yeah. 2017 is when we spoke with you about and you showed yep. us this picture mm -hmm. of the table mm -hmm. do you remember that Sherry yes I do and so like when we were trolling through this you know Facebook page we saw just the edge of that table yeah. Denise got it, in yeah. fact. Oh, cool. Denise said, hey, Peter, <laughs> look at this, look at this table. And I was like, oh, wait, you're right. Yeah. And it has the wood paneling. Mm -hmm. So we're like, well, well, where was that photo taken, right? And so we're trying to figure that out. So, um, oh, okay. Uh, so that's led us obviously now, now to the, obviously this Facebook page has a person that's got like people tagged into it. So it has, uh, so Peter has a... But that's still... The detective mentions that names were tagged in a Facebook photo, and he's interrupted by the FBI agent. The agent wants Sherry to verify that the memory is still valid before they say any names. This serves a specific purpose. Sherry will back up her claim by reiterating it and re-verify that it is true, so any changes to the story will be increasingly glaring in the future. Like, that's still a valid memory, right? Is that this was the table... Yeah, a, a table like this was the table you were on when you were branded? And we've been talking about that a lot because so many memories are so faded now. It's been a long time. It's been a really long time. So, like, details and things like that. We did the best that we could to take notes on it and all that, but a lot of it's really hard. Sure. It's hard to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I see both of those from... What she told me. So. Okay. So that was an interest. With that, we started looking at different people and who might be involved and just trying to figure it out. And I wanted to show you this picture. And obviously, um, people can change their weight, people can change the color of their hair. Don't. Um, just because the photo might be a little bit different, as you know, women like to change their hair. And, their makeup, their, their weight can change, so that, that might be a little bit different. But we wanted to take a look at this uh, six pack and see if you recognize anybody, see these six photos. A six pack is a lineup of six people, which may or may not include a suspect or potential suspect. This is a very common strategy that law enforcement will use to see if a suspect can be identified visually. Um, you don't feel like you have to provide an answer. There's no right or wrong answer. Just let us know if you see anybody in this photo that you do recognize, and if you do, We'll talk about how. Okay. okay. Keith, if you could just wait not to say anything and talk. Oh, yeah, that way yeah. we don't have <laughs> phones. Out. I mean, this one a little bit, but. Can you say this one a little bit? Which number is it? Number three. And when you're ready, I'll show Nothing's you. Nothing's really like. There's nothing in there that says, oh, yeah, that's her. No. Okay. It's like kind of picture of a different hair and stuff. <laughs> That's 
a pleasant group of people. Yeah. And again, keep you just gently. It's hard because the other photos are distracting me. Can you give me another piece of paper, if you don't mind? Another piece? Yeah, I want to cover. Yes. I want to look at them when we want to. Sure. It's easier. <laughs> it's a little distracting. There we go. Thank you. She's got that, that puffy under those eyes, but I don't know. Take your time. I mean, for her, like I said, if it's even close, it's worth telling you guys, obviously, to look at it, right? Or well, no, it's just, it need to? obviously, we know they're masked. We know there's already yeah. hurdles to come about. Um, just another tool, another way to. Just another. And obviously, because you don't know the people. If you knew the people, then we'd show pictures, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, I don't know, for some reason it Ooh, makes it harder when you're looking at like a crowd of... Like Peter said, you know, different color hair and dyes and all that kind of stuff. I know, just... <clears throat> like I'm trying not to get my hopes up. I would say right right here is what's drawing me to this photo. So on photo number five, yes. this, Marty, this, is, uh, this is the first one we showed you, the second one we showed you. So on six pack number two. But like you were saying, if someone were to lose weight, that would change. You're drawn to photo number five? Yes. Features of photo number five? Correct. And again, just for, for the record and for when you go back, like number number one is when you say three similar, she's similar to the younger female that we've always described in everything. This she's, part right here doesn't really match what I'm remembering. But the yes, hairline doesn't match? Smaller one, older one. And just because it's been a long time, um, can you remind me what number, what, what the younger one did, like the main parts of it compared to the older one just for the last, like clarity of stuff? So for the record, so the younger one's the one that let me go, okay. and was the nicer of the two. Okay. The older one was really abusive and really mean, and is the one that did all the really terrible things. Okay. Remember, Sherry said that she was abducted by two Hispanic females, one older and one younger. Sherry is asked to clarify which of the pictures she's chosen refer to which suspect, and then asked for a brief difference in her treatment from the two. And that, that's my memory too, mm -hmm. just trying to reference it for our notes and what we uh, go yeah, so we don't have to say, oh, she was referring to the second interview back yes. in 2017. It's hard. I put the members' names in my head, but <laughs> they're really close. Yeah. They're not close. Is number three alive in that photo? Yeah. <laughs> And then one more. <laughs> I don't think anyone in this one really. So for six pack number three, nobody. Really. I don't think so. So we have more pictures. We're not. That's not the end of the road. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, with the female, the familiar DNA, obviously we saw that first picture that has the wood paneling um, yes. and we've got the table, right? So that's that's ultimately what led us to those pictures 
which then snowballed us down the road that we're eventually at and where we are. Uh, so were today. you able to find like where that house is? Yes. And what, tell oh. me more. Tell me more. We'll, tell me more. We'll get to that. We'll okay. <laughs> Going. It's revealed that the house in question has been located. Sherry's excitement is understandable. However, her excitement is actually anxiousness. You see, Sherry's only telling some truths. She's hiding a lot of information from not only the investigators, but Keith as well. And may I ask, how did we even get to that point? How did we get that point? Based on familiar DNA. So they said, they came back and said, oh, here's some people related in this familiar. There's about 40 people total. That's a good thing, I guess. But 40 is better than You just started going million, through and then, or whatever boom, the that are. caught your eye. Which yeah, you we started looking at everything that we could. Phones, online presence, cool. criminal history, Facebook photos, DMV photo, what they drive. You guys are still on. <laughs> like, like you said, Denise, obviously you guys are aware, Denise is yeah. at a different location now. She's the one that found that picture. So we cast a wide net to start finding certain aspects. Is she still working on the case, even though she's in? Not officially, no. but I always call her and say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I love her so much. I'm but yeah, so she's sad. still working on it in an informal way. So, so if you look at this oh. closet. <laughs> Obviously, so there's, no there's, there's stuff in there now. I'm not looking at the stuff. I literally was cleaning papers out yesterday and found that drawing that you didn't. I haven't even looked at the picture yet, but I've seen it now. Can I look at it? <laughs> Let's see. I just found the original one of that that I was trying to explain. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty, excuse my language, it's pretty fucking similar. <laughs> but it's different. What's different or what's yeah. the same? It's hard. There's a lot of shit in the photos, but. Well, let's, let's focus on. Let's... Yeah. We we'll focus on those two. There's less. There's less color. <laughs> I've been. I've done walked the streets with my wife in Mexico. We went yeah. to every shop because of the color changes. No, <laughs> nothing. Not because there was anything new in it. Just the color. Now, can I ask a question? Is this from the same house as that? We don't we'll get, get to that. Oh, okay. Oh, what? <clears throat> what do you <throat> see in this photo, Sherry? Like what? You said it looks very similar. What's similar? I mean, similar? this is. What I'm remembering that feeling, you know, grabbing it and feeling that feeling. But mm -hmm. this part is different. This part is different. That doesn't definitely. So doesn't you're saying this metal same. part it looks the same as what you remember, but this piece right here. This part doesn't look the same, right? And, and what the, was the difference in it? That there was a lot more. There was a lot more like, there. Like bulkier. Yes. Thank you. I don't think the pictures really show. If I, if I maybe look at this. Is it more metal or like uh, beefier, like if you look stronger? At this side of it, a little bit more. So basically, the width of a plywood, a sheet of plywood. Oh. It's like a piece of plywood almost. It didn't look like that. Yeah, it looks blown up, so it makes it look like it's that thick, but it's about like three quarter yeah. it's, it's inch somewhere. It's probably like half inch. It's half inch. Stuff. Okay, yeah, this looks big in the picture. Yeah, it didn't look like that. Okay, but similar. Besides the metal part, anything else similar? I mean, the metal part? What about one ver shelf versus two shelves? Oh. Um, I think there was two shelves, but now I'm having trouble remembering. I think okay. there was two. I'm pretty sure there was two. I can't, maybe there was two? I don't know. I'm focusing on this part right now. I'm sorry. Sure. So, that's fine. window. With the wood panel. Which 
trying to ignore the TV and stuff. I don't think you had a TV with you, right? <laughs> Definitely not. Um, what am what am I looking for for the window? Do you want to know if it's like the same height? Well, it's it's the type of window, the, the wall itself, anything right. from these photos that make you believe that this was where you were being held. I feel like this wood paneling is too thick, but I mean, you mean this there way? was wood paneling, but I don't, I can't remember something like that being there, and I, I don't remember. I don't remember it going all the way up to the window is what I'm having trouble remembering. The window in that photo has holes along the edges. There's holes. I just don't. Yeah, I'm holding a second yeah. right here. We're going fast. Sorry. We don't mean to overwhelm you. We're just trying to draw your attention to different things that maybe we noted. And we want to know how that compares with what you The window compared remember. to the wood paneling because it getting just. Take note of Sherry's posture. She's hunched over, avoiding eye contact, and even shielding her face from the detectives. As the questions become harder and harder, and as each subsequent picture and confirmation rolls through, she begins to recede further and further into herself. I don't I mean, that's probably not important. I mean, not, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but the obvious is those are screw holes, right? Is that what you're getting at? They're just holes. Oh. Holes, screw, nail, something. Okay. For a board. <laughs> So is it fair to say that this, the paneling, like wood paneling below and sheetrock above is what you remember, but you can't recall okay. details about the ledge and, and the, the difference in width of these. And I can't remember up to the window. That's, that's okay. exactly what I was drawn to, is that this is touching the How window. How it meets the window and I don't, threshold? Yeah. Okay. Something's going funky with that. Something sure. seems well, in those pictures could be long before or after. Well, I don't know about that. It could be off base. That, and yeah. it couldn't even be a detail that's with an important. So far, I was pretty <laughs> So one of the things that we always noted in the like the bathroom description is just the the weird layout of the bathroom. So do you remember the layout of the bathroom? Yes. Well, so let's talk about the description. Best description, and then we'll start showing some. But there's door, toilet, sink. Tub. Is that what you mean? The, yeah. So you walk in the door. Percent. First, there's a toilet. Yes. On the right and or which side? If I'm. She's a worst in the world. With, <laughs> just sorry. in general. I am. <laughs> I don't know. But whatever you, you walk in the door. On one left or right, you have a toilet. Then. I want to say it's on the left. I'm sorry. That's fine. I want to say toilet on the left. Okay. So maybe a toilet on the left. Okay, hold on. Toilet on the side. <laughs> toilet on the side. And then what's toilet next? Toilet on the side. Sink. Tub. Take a moment to make a mental note of how Sherry is acting. Laughing, more than willing to talk, and even making small jokes with the investigators at times. Okay. And that's a unique thing about bathrooms. Yes. We all, we all, we all yep. agree with Hard that. Hard to change yes. where that, so that sewer will go, right? Yeah. Take, some, take some expense to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, the layout of the bathroom that Sherry was allowed to use was extremely odd, which stood out to investigators when she gave its description after her reappearance. The bathroom in question, coincidentally enough, has almost the exact same layout, materials, and even imperfections. I think it's the first yeah. one. I can be I can keep turning it upside down. Alright, now I'm ready. <laughs> Well, that, that's just pleasant. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that magazine. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, the first thing that you yeah. found the magazine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. We were talking about the order. <laughs> we were talking about the order. Plus, the magazine's not open. So I mean, good. this doesn't look like the bathroom to me, but the order is... Yes, this is the type of order, but this is not what it looked like to me. Okay. And 
So the order is correct, but you don't recognize the bathroom as being what you recall. Do you remember there was a detail about the shower that you provided previously, uh, about the type of something on the tile or something like that? Do you remember? That there was tile on the tub. There was a crack. Where was the crack? It's not a memory test. If you don't remember, that's fine. But we we remember that detail when we took some of these puzzles, and we just wanted to bump it up against what you might remember. I don't know. In general, are we talking about... Okay. Sherry shushes the federal investigator. This could be a response driven by two factors. One, Sherry wants to come up with an answer under the guise of recalling her memories. And two, Sherry's narcissistic urge to control the conversation at her own pace and direction. Yet again, she shields her face from the investigator. Hi. That's okay. You take your time. I don't know. I know. I remember there's a crack. I'm not. So for like trying to, do you remember if it was high or low? Was it any of those like details? Horizontal, vertical. One tile, lots of tiles. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. Can I talk or not? Sure. Unless she tells you she's. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to like get myself there, and just I don't. As a reminder, I do remember when we went to my grandma's house. Mm -hmm. You didn't like her tile because it reminded you of that. I think I sent. Him. You sent us a picture. Yes. That's why I would say we. That's why I, I just want to remind her because if you think of that, because I can't even think of what her tile looks like right now, but I do remember you didn't like that at all. But I can't remember the crack. I remember you told me a crack, but I don't remember where you told me. I don't. Or else I'd bring it up. But. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm so nervous of like saying something that's not gonna be right. So. Sherry expresses some apprehension at saying something that might not be correct. This is an incredibly ironic statement, as we will soon find out. I I just can't remember. I don't well, like know. I said in the beginning, we only want the truth, and so whatever is the best I think we'll understanding know. or memory that you have. We'll right, there, right? and my direction is obviously not the best. Well, then this is starting to... That doesn't look right to me, but... So this crack is in a different location than this crack, which is probably better viewed in this photo. This is the same bathroom we showed you the This is original, the, the same one with the charming magazine on the Sports <laughs> Illustrated, <Great>. yes. <laughs> this interaction, Sherry's disapproval of the quote charming magazine in the bathroom, which was a copy of Sports Illustrated, is a strange peek into the type of person that Sherry is. Sherry doesn't approve of a magazine like Sports Illustrated, the swimsuit edition, undoubtedly, but Sherry's moral compass tends to only point in one direction, one way. Her way. You know, I didn't reach this one. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so nothing jumps out at you at that point. We're not trying to overwhelm you. Obviously, it's been a long road, and, and, and here we are. Uh, if we could go back to the closet really quick, though, I remember when you were talking about being chained into the closet and trying to figure out a way to get loose. You talked about working a on a screw, right? Uh-huh. And what happened to that screw when you were done with it? I dug a hole in the wall and poked it into the wall. Okay. Because this is, this is an interesting photo as well. Is this in the closet? That's in the closet. No, it was, I, it was drywall. It was into the drywall. It was into drywall, but... By the electric plug, if I remember right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe not that one. No. Okay. Okay. So, we're showing you all of this um, because ultimately this is the house um, that, that you were at. Um, we talked to the people who live there. Um, we've Sorry. <laughs> 
This is a moment to rejoice. The house in question has been found. Keith is bursting with relief and happiness at the new revelation, as you'd expect. But Sherry, Sherry seems to have no reaction, other than calming Keith down for a moment. We, we've, we found the house. We found who was involved. Um, we talked to who was involved. Um, we talked to family who, who knows that you were there. Uh, and talked to a couple people that, or talked to one guy um, who did see you um, during this event. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of truths. There's a lot of things that were, that were said that we have always confirmed. That we've always said there's there's a lot of truths and then there's some unknowns like one of the simple ones like well this description of the bathroom is just weird like that was like an argument in all of our offices where we were sitting there like this this part's weird um but then we find a house with it then the the all thread through the thing that's just again that's just weird um, it's unique to this place like that's a pretty custom you can't just go out to Ikea and buy a closet that looks like this. Yeah, exactly. Right. So once once we have all those things and we start talking to the person who lives here, who had lived there, who still lives there, um, start talking to his family and starting that whole investigation, peeling one thing back after another after another, doing the same thing we've done for the last four years, um, it led us to a specific person, um, but not a female. It led us to the car that picked you up, but not an SUV. So there's lots of different aspects that are truths and falses. Um, and we're, we're to the point now that nobody would have ever imagined that this would have blown up the way that it did. So I've been a cop 15 years. I've never seen the media scale that, that this garnered pretty quickly. Um, how long have you been in law enforcement now? 12 years in the Bureau. So, like, of the mines, Brian, who's been around 20 plus years, people have been in my office like 25, 30 plus years. Um, the media attention that this got out was, was insane. Um, so I think with that being said, some choices and some decisions ultimately, ultimately changed the original path of, of what happened. Um, I don't think anybody would have wished the media frenzy that occurred like for this event, no matter what the situation, if it was a kid, because the media skewed so many facts. It, it brought so many people in from the woodwork that if we didn't have the woodwork, we wouldn't have the noise. And that brings a lot of pressure when you get that kind of scrutiny. Um, so we, we'd like to talk to you more about those things and we can do it with Keith here or we can ask Keith to leave. Um, to whatever you're comfortable with so we can break down some of the problems. If you want Keith here, all we want is to, to, to have the truth. All we want is to be able to tell the truth. Um, all That's all we've ever wanted from day one. Um, we went, we talked with you for hours, we've been there, we've, we've done the, all these different things, waiting for something, waiting for it to break, waiting for us to get, lead something to hear. Because um, the DNA came back, like I said, to a specific person. Uh, that specific person told us very specific things. Um, his family then told us specific things. Um, so if we can talk with Keith or without Keith here, um, what would you like? The slow head turn to Keith is as unsettling as it seems. As mentioned in the opening of the interview, there was a familial DNA match to DNA evidence found on Sherry when she reappeared, and now it is revealed that after further investigation, the actual person has been found as well. Things are going to get very awkward, very quickly, as the web of lies Sherry has woven begin to become untangled. It's, it's completely up to you. Um, and like I've always said, I wanted you to have a voice. I wanted you to make decisions. I wanted you to control certain aspects. I think I told you that on the first interview we ever had. I never want to bully you. I never want you to believe I'm bullying you. I want you to take back control. Um, that's one of those things. This is that, that take back control of the interview. 
um, which I promised you to do the first time we talked, if you remember that. Actually, we were in Mount Shasta, so the second time we talked. Um, the detective is very precise with his wording and is certain to not outright accuse Sherry of anything. He says that he wants her to take back control, a common phrase and act when trying to give victimized individuals a voice when they feel voiceless. He's careful to phrase what he wants her to do as taking back control, as in control the narrative before someone else, like law enforcement, says it for them, while simultaneously avoiding victim blaming or sounding accusatory. It's been a long road, Sherry, but we just want to talk to you. We can have some step out if that's going to make you more comfortable. Yeah, it's up to you. Do you want to step out or do you want to stay? Obviously, I want to stay. <laughs> or we can do a little bit of both. Talk to you alone first and then have him come back in. And it's completely up to you. And that's why I'm not even looking at Keith. I don't care about your opinion, Keith. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, I, what we want out of this is just is the truth um, so we can get ahead of some things so we can help control things how crazy things got so the unknown of if I say certain things what's Keith's reaction because you don't know what I'm going to say right so I don't know Keith's reaction either um, so if I say other things like oh Keith won't worry about that he can come back yet but I'd rather give you the opportunity to hear things be able to judge it because it, at everything, right? I'm, I'm saying things to you that are making me nervous. It's making Keith nervous. It's it's changing the element, right? What, we changed the tone of the interview. You can feel it already in the room from the way you walked in to what you're feeling right now. Uh, so. Well, I mean, law enforcement has always it's been an issue. So. Okay. Yeah. So if if you want Keith to leave, I'll ask Keith nicely to leave. Um, if you don't want Keith to leave, then he can sit here and press on, and, we'll, press uh, on. and we'll, we'll move on to the next stages. Uh, but I want to give you that opportunity first. But obviously everything's fearful. If you tell him to leave and what I'm going to say is benign, then, then he's gonna, we can pull him back in the room. Like, hey, Keith, come on again. This, this, is what, <laughs> this is what we talked about. Um, so so there, that fear of him wigging out, why, why is she trying to hide something from me? There is, um, if there's been help me. Yeah, there's no there's trick here. We're just yeah. trying to make sure that yeah, I there's no trouble to talk because you can't be to talk to us, truthfully. Are, are They're asking you. They're not asking me. Obviously, I, I would want to be here and whatever needs to come out. And you can change your mind in the future, too. If you but want to change it. It's going to get out, so. Like I said in the beginning, you're free to go. So if you wanted to chat with them privately, that's fine too. But we, we want can, to talk to you. And we can leave the room, give you guys the room for a couple minutes. Um, this next stage of things could be could be benign. Could be like, I've, oh, I, we forgot to tell you this. Or, oh yeah, all of these things make sense now. Um, the, this, I could tell you the puzzle that makes it all come together. Or I can tell the puzzle that crashes everything apart. I don't know what that piece is, honestly. All I know is facts. All I know is certain specific items that will either tear the castle down or is going to build the castle up. And I don't want to, I don't want to build, tear the castle down and not give you the ability to then fix your own castle. Even if it's just a small thing here or it's the whole castle, I want you to be able to, to choose that. Um, so we can step out of the room, let you guys talk, because I don't know what information I'm going to do if it's life-changing news or if it's, oh yeah, everything's fine. I just don't know what it is. Um, usually, right, we show the pictures because everybody's invested in this picture. Keith, do the drawings. Keith's the one who laid, gave this stuff. So Keith has always been a part of your memory for small details. Um, and that's why Keith's been in here this whole time. <clears throat> And that's why he makes me feel safe in you. Absolutely. Well, if he makes you feel safe too, we can so, continue on. I know you can, can change my Absolutely. Him? And again, I just don't know what the pieces are. So if I would say, hey, this is gonna bring the whole world down, I tell you, this is gonna bring the whole world down. Mm -hmm. And then we need to talk talk alone. Um, or I would suggest we talk alone. Um, but that's completely up to you guys because I don't know. Um, you just want to talk to yeah. We'll be we'll be right back.
The investigators leave the room to allow Sherry and Keith a moment to talk. Undoubtedly, this is an act of graciousness to allow Sherry to be the one to tell Keith the truth. The truth that she's been hiding from Keith for almost four years at this point. The audio you will hear has been greatly enhanced and at some points is still difficult to hear. Captions have been applied where possible, but some of what's been said has been undoubtedly lost into the ether. You need to stop waiting here and telling you the truth. I don't like anything. Yeah, whatever you're doing, it doesn't mean anything. It's tough to me. Yeah, 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 it's tough to me. Be arrested. I don't want to press charges on her. I don't want to find her. Explain to me right now. I don't. I don't know. I don't want them to find her. You're not listening to me. Another peek into who Sherry is without her mask on. With no hesitation, Keith has believed Sherry since her disappearance. But now the holes in her story are beginning to show. When he presses her on the truth, she snaps at him angrily. Sherry's control of the narrative is swirling down the drain, and her one unwavering lifeline since the very beginning is now asking questions. Because she saved my life. But tell me, honey, there's obviously something going on. There's obviously something going on. Tell me this is going to be really bad. You know, tell me this is going to be really bad. Look at how dark it is right now. I am. I am fucking with you. No, I'm not angry now. I don't want them to find her. I don't want to press charges, and I don't want, I don't want to go down that road. But you tell her? I don't want to go down that road. I don't want Tell to arrest her because she saved my life and she's the reason why I get to hold my children every single day. This, I don't want to get in trouble for life to the police. I don't want them to want to get behind her. I don't I don't want them to arrest her. Why? Because she saved my life. So you don't press her? They still need to find out who it is. No matter what, do you think this just sits here? This comes out and they find the house, it's over. Whatever happened is over. And it doesn't matter what you say. They're gonna be, the girl's gonna get in trouble. So, you need to tell them the truth. They're not the truth. If you don't want to press charges, then that's up to you. Sherry was given just under two and a half minutes to bring her husband up to speed on the truth of the matter and to soften any blows that Keith might receive when he hears the rest of the discovered information. Sherry opts to double down. She says that she doesn't want her arrested. Sherry comes up with, or uses a poorly fabricated tale, that the younger of her two kidnappers was the one to let her go, and because that suspect gave her a chance to return to her family, she doesn't want her to get in any trouble. And as a result, she doesn't want investigators to find out who she is. Keith, rightfully so, says that it doesn't make any sense and demands the truth. Detectives return at the 2 minute and 29 second mark into their one-on-one conversation to pick up where they left off. Well, obviously, hopefully you've had a chance to chat briefly. The fears later, maybe. Nothing, nothing that we that I'll say to you. I won't eventually tell him if you yeah. know, if you want me to. Do you want me to just tell him what you're fearing about? We would love to hear what you're fearing about. Because <laughs> we want to be able to address them as best we can. I think it's easier to control things once you know what the information is. 
to be honest with you, Sherry. So the, I can tell you what it is, uh, say, say what it is when Keith leaves, and then you can say yes or no, whether or not you want him in there for the rest of it. For right now, he's just, yeah. am I in the room or am I other? So that's the, yeah. and I'm, and I'm, I'm to the point where if you want him here, we'll just go on with the conversation. As like, long as you're not interrupting or causing yeah. it. I'll, I'll stay over here. <laughs> yeah. But if he steps out, I can say a name, and then you can choose whether you want you want him in here for the rest of it or not. It's completely up to you. Or I can just continue on and, again, like I said, I wanted you to always have control um, over certain aspects of stuff. We're not to a point where anybody's going to jail yet. We're not to a point of any anything like that. We're we're just still at the talking stage. We're at the control stage. Uh, you seem scared, Sherry. Sure. No, it's not scared. What is it? When you don't answer, Sherry, it makes me concerned because I want to hear what your answers are and I want to be able to understand. The only way to control things is your breath, you know. Hi. Sherry is up against the wall now with no way out of her current situation. She has two options. Come clean now and hope that the authorities will be merciful or to again double down with investigators on the last four years of deceit, just like she did with Keith a moment ago. I don't want you to find her. Sherry opts to dig her heels into her story, prays for a miracle, and sticks to her original story. We're not going to find her. She's the reason why I get to see my children every day. I agree, but we're not going to find her. She's the reason? What do you mean by that? She means the younger one let her go. Right? Is that what you're referring to? Um, we're not going to find her. Uh, and we can we can just skip to, we can skip to the rock into the water and ruffle up the pond if we want to now. Again, the, this is your last offer. This, this is the last time if you want to do this alone or with Keith. Keith's been through this also on a different level. Um, so I'm, I'm ready just to, I'm ready to move on and, and throw the dart and throw the rock and see what happens with the water. But Sherry, look, look at me. What do you want? I don't want her to get in trouble. She's not going to get in trouble. So the DNA came back to James Reyes. Uh, you're the in. DNA that was on you belongs to James Reyes. The picture in the, can I get the picture? The, the picture of the table is James Ray's little brother who died recently. Just after 40 minutes into the interview, it is revealed that the DNA that was found on Sherry was linked to James Reyes. James Reyes is no stranger to Sherry. They had previously been involved in a very serious long-term relationship. Not only was the DNA matched to Reyes, but upon confrontation, Reyes told investigators every single bit of detail. The house of lies that Sherry Papini has built is now tumbling down. Uh, he, we talked to him. We, he's been on a polygraph. We talked to everybody around him. We have the rental agreements, phone rental, the car rental agreements. We have, we have everything that says that he said he told me. To. That's James' brother, deceased Nick. So everything, you've told us so many truths in this situation. The reason why you can describe the room is because you stayed in the room in the dark for hours, for days on end. The reason why you lost so much weight is because you stopped eating. The reason why you got a rash on your arm is because you cleaned his house. The reason why the brand 
It's because he went to the store, bought the brand new tools, and branded you. The reason why your nose was broke is because of a hockey stick. I know all of those things, and I know there was no sex. Investigators also reveal something that would be shocking to most people. There was no sex between Sherry and James. For someone who grandstands what they believe is objectionable material, like the Sports Illustrated magazine from earlier in the interview, this one detail seems disturbingly hypocritical. She objects to the magazine, and she didn't physically cheat on Keith, but simultaneously, she disappeared and ran off with an ex-boyfriend for over three weeks. Where exactly does Sherry's true moral compass lie? I know all of that because he passed a polygraph test. That said, it's not an abduction. She asked me to come get her. No. I rented a car. No. I drove up and picked her up. He, he passed the polygraph test, Sherry. If that's not what happened, what did happen, Sherry? I don't know. No, there's no way it's James. There's no way. There's no way. The DNA doesn't lie. His DNA. His, his DNA was on you. His there's brother. no way. Robert saw you in the house while you were down there. While everything He's spun Robert. out of control, his cousin. Why everything ran out of control on the initial. There's no way. It's it's 100% Robert's, or James's DNA. We even collected blonde hairs from the room. <laughs> Blonde hairs collected at James Reyes' house returned as a match to Sherry Papini, further bolstering the already nearly airtight claims that Sherry was with Reyes. There's no way it's James! There's no way! It's all right that it is. Why are you saying it's not James? <laughs> Why are you saying it's not? Again, with no real response aside from, there's no way it's James, Sherry buries her face and cries. They found me. What's up? We were friends. Mm -hmm. There's no way. And he came and got you because you asked him. <laughs> no. When was the last time you had contact with James? His brother died. Brother died in 2017. <laughs> Is that right? I don't remember. Was it before or after the abduction? Before. Before. <laughs> when was the last time you saw James? I don't know. Forever ago, oh. when I lived in Southern California. So the last person-to-person -person contact you had with him was back in 2006? <sighs> when you were living in Southern California? I don't know. So, was it prior to your marriage? It's him. There is no way it's him. Well, it is James. The DNA tells us that it, it was his well, DNA on you. The, the DNA alone says it's him. And when we talked to him and confronted him with the DNA, he told he, us what happened. He 100% told us what happened. And gave us details that nobody else would know. And we can call him and we can all talk about it. But ultimately, can you look at me for a second? Sherry's avoidance of eye contact does not go unnoticed. Sherry ignores the request to look up. She will lift her head up only two more times throughout this interview, avoiding eye contact and, unfortunately, muffling a majority of her words. Ultimately, we put him on a polygraph like we did Keith. Keith was inconclusive, to be honest with you, on whether he was involved or not. But 100%, James was showing the truth. The questions were, did Sherry ask you to come pick her up? He answered yes. That was the truth on a polygraph. We asked him if you, the two of you ever had sex. The answer was no. During 2016. During 2016, during the abduction, he said no, that was the truth. We asked him if you asked him to brand, if you asked him to brand you, the answer was yes. And he passed the polygraph on all of those questions. He took us to the stores where he bought the chain. He taught, we talked to the friend who rented the car. The car that he rented drove over 900 miles in a day on the drop-off point. Sure, I know this is a lot to take in. 
follow but it's not like we don't know the answers to these questions. And the fear of fear of Keith's reaction, obviously now he's in the room, the fear of media, the fear of all of these things are coming are coming forward. They're, they're in front of you now. Uh, in the last 15 minutes, Keith has learned that the place where his wife was held captive and the person responsible for her disappearance are both known, but immediately after that, that his wife is hiding something, that her ex-boyfriend is involved, and that he was involved because Sherry asked him, generally speaking, for him to help Sherry abduct herself. Keith's world is collapsing in on itself yet again, and he slowly distances himself from Sherry as the interview progresses. The only way to get a hold of it, the only way for everybody to come together and heal, the whole community has to heal, is to, is for us to be able to say, when we, when we presented all of the evidence, all of the stuff that came forward, she, you told us the truth. You told us what happened. Because you did go in a dark room, that's true. You did lay in the backseat of a car, that's true. You did... Um, lose weight. You were branded. Your hair was cut. You did have bruises all over. But how those bruises got there are because you did it and James did some. The reason why your nose got broke is because you held the hockey stick to your face and he forced it into your nose. The reason why the brand is in a straight line is because he did it. He described exactly where it was. He told us exactly how he did it, where he did it, how he did it. Only you and I and maybe five other people know where the brand was. He told me immediately. When Sherry reappeared, she had burn injuries on her right shoulder that were caused by being branded with red hot metal. This brand appears to be a reference to a Bible verse, but what the significance of the brand represented was never discovered. Robert told friends and family you were there. His mom knew that you were there because, of course, it went news and everybody knew you guys dated. Everybody guys knew you guys had a relationship. So when it happened, of course, family reached out to him. He told him, yeah, she was here. But it said it hurt her. I didn't hurt her. So what are you thinking, Sharon? That doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it make sense? What actions doesn't make sense? A lot of it doesn't make sense. Okay. Can you talk about those? No. James, DNA was confirmed on you, on your clothing. The two of you haven't seen each other in over a decade. If you, you told me that you haven't been in his room, you haven't had contact with him in over 10 years. However, you just grabbed his bedroom to a T. And, this, and the DNA on you was still a vibrant piece of DNA. Ten-year-old DNA dies. The DNA that was there specifically was non-seminal fluid, was, was seminal fractions. You got that from his house somewhere. So whether it was the bed that you were sleeping on, whether it was the couch, whether it was anywhere in there, when somebody would come to the door and be around the property, you'd call James, James would call Robert, which is those two doors down. Robert would run people off the property. Robert told me all of that. James told me everything. So the only person that hasn't started telling us certain facts, there are certain facts that are true. When we were sitting there talking to James, there were so many truths that were a part of your story that it's hard to decipher the lies until we put it all together. Until he says, hey, why, how did you pick her up? I open up the passenger side seat, I open the door, you jumped in the back seat. Why'd you, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? I don't know. It was weird. So, so are, you, are you calling James a liar? Do we not, are, are we not believing James what he told me? No. Investigators keep the pressure on Sherry. All the evidence and witness statements show that Sherry was with James. She's now faced with an uncomfortable ultimatum. Does she dig her heels even further into her story, which has completely come apart? Does she throw James, who was ultimately her accomplice, under the bus? Or does she come clean and try to make things right? 
I know, I know you're scared. I cannot believe that it is James. I can't believe James told us the truth. That's what I can't believe. Uh, he passed a polygraph, Sherry. So did Keith. No, he didn't. He was a conclusive. And he was involved. So James is involved. So James is involved, but I don't... James what? picked you up. You called James to pick you up. You mailed him a letter with your address. You used a... No. You used a burner phone to call another burner phone for James to come and get you. You're saying since you're married, you haven't called James? No, I have called James. Because earlier you said you had contacted James. Those phone records show that you do. You did. The phones don't lie. The DNA doesn't lie, Sherry. His polygraph doesn't lie. So we, you can go his, a couple different directions now. His story. I've already told you lying to me is a crime. So you walk out the store with telling lies, and that's a crime. I think we need my lawyer. This isn't making any sense. What's not making sense, Sherry? The parts that, that don't make sense. That it's James. No, the parts that don't make sense are that you're accusing two females who abducted you when it was James. The part that you were branded, James did it. He told me he no. did it. Who, who would sit there and no. say, no. I branded her, branded Sherry on her right shoulder blade? Who does that? And he told us how and showed us the letters that matched the brand. Took us to the store and pointed out the letters. Reality is starting to sink in for Sherry. On top of being confronted with the evidence of her being responsible for her own kidnapping, she's now been reminded that she's speaking to a federal investigator and has indeed committed a crime. Sherry makes her first smart decision in a very long time, and in an act of self-preservation, brings up wanting her lawyer. The, the problem is today, today's the case is a result. Everything, the only things, well, how do we prove that you're telling us the truth? How do we prove that the, tr the, the truth is that two women took you, but I, I'm telling you it's a male. The, the fact that you were branded is true. The small fact is that you willingly laid down and did it versus being tied to a table. So we can always, we could do the polygraph and try to, whatever parts are you're confused about. Can you go with that? Can I talk to you outside real quick? Yeah, um, there. Wait, that's fine. Yeah. Keith wants to talk to an investigator outside of the room for a moment. Undoubtedly, Keith is fed up with the entire situation, feeling manipulated, hurt, and defeated. For the first time since burying her face into her hands, Sherry looks up to see her husband, the person that has supported her and believed her from the very beginning, walk away from her for what she believes to be the very last time. The, the fears of how out of control everything got. The fear of all these things is the reality. And the only people that can slow the train down is you and I. You, you put yourself through this so when you came forward, you can tell certain stories. You missed. The, you couldn't control the DNA that we found. You couldn't control when we talked to James, he'd tell us what happened. story always was hard for anybody to understand. The tragedy that the community went through, the events that unfolded, the fear now of what, what it all means. But there's without a doubt, James's DNA was on you. I can't, and the I cannot, no. The no. likelihood of being an ex-boyfriend is a problem. No. The, it's astronomical. Then you add in, when we don't talk to people who never even heard of us, when we say, hey, what's going on here? They knew that you were at the house. All of them never came forward. No. No what? Do you want to call James? No. <laughs> this was a long road. I had no idea what it was going to take me. But right now, continuing and saying that two girls took you is a lie to Peter. It's just a lie. 
as we were able to prove with evidence with a rental car agreement, person driving to a thousand miles in a day, the DNA on you and him passing a polygraph, it's it's three legs to a three legs to the table it can stand up. Kids can wait out there. Now's your opportunity. Based on your reaction previously, what you're telling me is you did not call James and ask him to come get you? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's what you're saying, I have to understand that. There are things he says that we can corroborate, and whatever you say, we're going to try and corroborate. But right now, I'm not sure what you're saying. You're just saying you can't believe it's him. And you're saying you don't understand. But there are deals, details he provided. We know he, you were in his house. We collected hairs from that bedroom. That's going to have DNA on it. We already have your hairs that you left with your cell phone when you were picked up. He has my DNA, obviously. So that's not going to lie either. The descriptions you provided are that room and that house to a T, except it's not a gravel driveway. And it's not elevated. And there's not two women who live there. But James lives there. James lives there. You know James lives there. So you might as well get it out of your head that James is not involved, because James is clearly involved. And James already told us he's the one that did the brain. That's something that he admitted to mayhem. He admitted to a felony you could put him in prison over. So how would that, how do you, it doesn't just, it doesn't jive. James Reyes admitted to everything that happened, and as a result, due to his intentional, albeit requested, disfigurement of Sherry's body, he has admitted to mayhem. Under California law, mayhem is punishable by two to eight years in prison or a life sentence for aggravated mayhem. So now it's your opportunity to say, were there issues between you and Keith? Is that why you needed to leave? I mean, we read your text message. We're already aware of some issues, but enlighten us if that's the case. If there was a valid reason for you to leave, let me know what that was. James said you had your jaw broken by him, and that's why he came and got you, because you were in an abusive relationship. I love my husband. Right. So were you in an abusive relationship with him? Have you told other people in your life that, like China, that Keith has abused you in the past when that wasn't true? China told me that day two where there was an incident at a party that you got hurt playing, like, I don't know, Wii or Pictionary or something, and then you told other friends that Keith hurt you. When there was witnesses at the party that said you just, that you got hurt during a party, and then you go tell James that you were being hurt, you were being abused, and you couldn't come forward because Keith has friends in law enforcement. If all of that's, is that true? Has Keith ever been abusive towards you? We are not talking about my husband. Okay. I love my husband. <laughs> so why leave? Is James lying to us? I don't want to leave my husband. I want to be with my children. I would never leave my children. But you, did, you did leave them permanently. You came back to them. Ultimately. No. You left them every day at ditch, daycare. So it's not like a... And James talked about that decision when you were driving down, how hard that was. You left at 10 o'clock knowing that Keith was going to get home late, knowing you were going to leave the kids at daycare, and how much that tore you up on the drive down. He told us that. Then things got out of control. James and I talked about that. We didn't talk about that before. When? Sherry's just either said her first truthful thing, or she's made a critical mistake. Sherry has maintained that she hasn't spoken to James since his brother's passing, but when the investigators mentioned that James had brought up that Sherry had a hard time imagining leaving her children behind, Sherry says that they had talked about that before. Now, earlier in the interrogation, Sherry said that she hadn't spoken to him since 2006, 14 years prior. At the time of the interrogation, Sherry's son Tyler was a preschooler, and her daughter, Violet, was a toddler. 
it is impossible for both of these things that Sherry has said to be fact. One of the two things that she's presented as truth is not. Sherry admits this conversation happening, and as a result of that, inadvertently admits to lying. When I went out of town for work. What happened? I always talk to other guys. Oh my god, why did I do that? Like when you were in Eureka, you give them a call? <laughs> Just start chatting with them? Told them some of your problems? When did it turn from just chatting to this plan to get away? No. 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 You were getting all with Donovan Mitsky the night before. Why did I do that? We're trying to understand why you did that too. We're trying to understand all of it. I don't know. I don't know what Donovan said that was because I was doing that. Doing what? This is awful choice. Talking to other guys that has got me here. <laughs> so, are you? What aspect are you saying? Like how? How did? How does talking to other people got you here? We've well, gotten over. I love my husband. And the yeah. man said that I made mistakes and I talked to other men and I shouldn't have. But but we took it a step farther this time. <laughs> this is a little different than just chatting with them. I I appreciate you talking and being forthright about the other guys you were talking to, when did it turn into something more? Obviously, you never would have imagined that CNN and 2020 and Good Morning America would care about you wanting to leave Keith or wanting to teach him a lesson no, or wanting to no, get him in line. No, I was just a fucking bitch and you said, you don't want to leave my husband. Right, I love my husband. How, how are you talking? How are you talking to James? How are you talking to James? How were you talking to James? <laughs> Reality continues to dawn onto Sherry. Over her unintelligible blubbering, the few words she lets out are that she loves her husband and her children. Sherry had been having emotional affairs with men for years, only to serve her narcissistic needs. The realization that everything that she had before is about to be taken from her, her past life, her husband, her kids, everything is about to come tumbling down. Again, the striking hypocrisy in Sherry's outward behavior and how she tries to come across as a good, moral, and righteous person versus who she is behind the curtains, a lying, manipulative, unfaithful sociopath, is noteworthy to put it lightly. Earlier in the interview, Keith had said jokingly, she's the worst. Never have truer words been spoken. On your, on your cell phone or another cell phone? My work cell phone, my work cell phone. This is more What's like your... just a flirt. <laughs> What's your work cell phone number? Remember? What's that? I don't remember. <laughs> How long were you guys talking? I don't know. Why would he have? Why would he rent a car and come and get you? I don't know. Well, if you don't know that, why would you get in the car and, and go down to Costa Mesa? <laughs> Those are all things we can verify, Sherry. The car rental, the fuel, the mileage, the calls from you to him, the burner phone, all of that can be proven. I'm horrible. I don't think you're a horrible person, Sherry. I think things went a little sideways on you. I, we, we started this conversation I knew what this was going to turn into. I didn't know that I'd have people stand on boxes in front of my office. That Keith would be on 2020. <laughs> I put my husband, I want my children. I said, stupid. Yep. I just for talking to other guys. But why did why did James come and get you? I know you guys were talking. I know you said in the past that Keith has hurt you to other friends. Why tell him those details if that stuff's not true? It's one thing to talk. It's one thing to talk. It's another thing to to say abuses are occurring. Everybody I talked to about James said he's the nicest person in the whole world. Yeah, he may be a hockey player, but he is the nicest person in the world. He's nice to a fault. 
I don't, I, I know lots of people. I don't know anybody I'd rent a car for and drive nine hours for. <laughs> Keith, James did that for you. He I never helped you. He never asked you why. He never questioned anything. He, he never put award money on the line. He never asked for anything. He didn't ask for sexual relations. He didn't ask for a relationship after you. He didn't ask for anything. He's never even talked to you since. And yet he stayed quiet until now. And the only reason why he talked is because we have his DNA. That's the only reason why we got to his door. That's the only thing that led us to his closet. That's the only thing that led us to the bathroom that's goofy. And that's the only reason why he started talking to us. Once we showed him, once he showed us the bedroom and we started pointing out the holes in the wall, like, you used to have this board up, huh? And he said, yeah. Sherry asked me to put boards up. <laughs> There's nobody who's ever going to be asked, be able to answer why decisions were made. Except for James, they don't understand. You don't understand what? What, what parts are you not Sherry. understanding? He even showed us, Sherry, he even showed us the letters that were used for the brain and the numbers. I have pictures of them right here. This what is, is that that was used? What did the Bible verse mean to you? How would he have known that? Why did you pick that Bible verse? For a brief moment, the investigators use a rapid-fire overloading tactic, sending very hard questions Sherry's way that require completely separate answers. Asking difficult questions that would only be asked to a guilty person in fast succession increases the stress on suspects, giving them no time to come up with an answer and giving the impression that they have no escape, which in Sherry's case is actually true. James took the Bible verse. We need to be able to control the outcome and what's going to happen next. The only thing we know is going to happen right now is what you can tell us and what you can shed light on and for other people to be able to, to try to understand. If it was a mistake, it was a mistake. But at this point, not telling us what happened, not telling us the truth, is another mistake. It's a mistake on top of a mistake. Right now, we can start over. We can we can end. We can leave without without a dirty conscience, without the what's going to happen next. Right deep, now, deep down inside, Sherry, next. I know you know what's right and what you should do, and you should come clean. The final olive branch has been extended to Sherry. She has been in control of the narrative for the last four years, and she is given a chance to explain her side before everything explodes. Sherry has to decide right here and right now how the rest of the story is going to go. Why did you ask James to come to get you? You asked Donovan the night before to come meet up with you. Everything happened at once. You were asking oh, to. a stupid thing to do. You know, the thing about it is we were able to prove that Donovan never came up here. <laughs> but now we can prove that James did. We have the records to prove it. Although you might not think it was a good idea now, 2020 hindsight, at the time, why did you ask him to come pick you up? Was that an I don't know? <laughs> What's that? Can't be James. Sherry has chosen her fate and opts to stick to what's worked for the last four years, despite being shown evidence otherwise. The tide has turned, and as captain of her ship of deceit, she has opted to drown with it. It is James. Sherry, the DNA doesn't lie. 
His DNA was on you. Your DNA is going to be in that room. One in septillion, <laughs> James. I don't even know how many zeros septillion is to be honest with you. That's why despite your description of how far you might have gone in the car, we already went down there. We knocked on his door. We took those pictures. He understood that the DNA didn't lie. So he came clean. Now it's your chance to do the same. And if you don't, you're going to be shaking your head later and say, I should have told him what happened. Don't talk to me like that. Like what? Just like how Sherry snapped at Keith during their quick moment earlier, Sherry snaps again when her desperate lies fall onto deaf ears. This time, though, she does it to a federal investigator, a federal investigator who for the last four years was working closely with her to resolve her case. Sherry is truly a despicable person. There's so many fears right now that we can't even wrap our head around it. There's, there's too many unknowns that we can't control. We can't control what, what the media is going to do. We can't control what, what everybody's going to think. The only thing we can control right now is to control that, that James told us the truth. And that's, that's a yes or a no. What did James lie about? What did James lie to us about? Of the thing, of the things I've told you. That's not even the question anymore. We know you were in that room. That's already <laughs> clear. You, you described everything in the room. What you're saying is it wasn't James that came and picked you up by the mailboxes? Is that what you're saying? There's still two females? Is that what you're saying, Sharon? The end of everything, once we've, you had to have known that this was going to come at some point. I was talking to my mom. What's up? This is all my fault. I was talking to so many guys. Well, we know. Such a stupid thing to do. Yeah, but then how did we get to Costa Rica? Or sorry, Costa Mesa? Wherever I was. How did we get to LA? There was a big jump and a leap from talking to men to getting in a car with somebody. But that getting in a car with somebody is somebody you had a relationship with. <laughs> he told us about the abortion. He told us about the, your guys' relationship. He told us about things that I don't know if you've ever told anybody about. He told us so many things. And he did it all for you. Nobody else. He got nothing out of this. And you're welcome to go home, Sharon? But right now is your opportunity to tell us the truth. And it can't be. <laughs> Are you saying that it was two females that picked you up? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Every time I ask that question, it seems like you don't answer it. You sat in a room, you drew out two people in a sketch, Sherry. Are those two people the ones that took you? It's a yes or no? I don't know. Well, you were pretty clear when I asked you earlier, what did, what did the younger one do? You said the younger one pointed a gun at you. She wasn't. It was just James. James was two we, hours late. We have the rental records from 2016 for the vehicle that he used. Why? Because we wouldn't look for it because he told me. Because I was talking to him. We, that's clear. Fault. You were talking to him. I don't know. This is my fault because I was talking to him. I just this can't. We have to control what we can control. No. We're, we're to the point that two... Did it, the younger female that you've always described, is she the one that put a point of gun at you? Is that true or not? I don't know. You, you do know. You told me earlier. 
So earlier today, when we were talking, I asked you, what did the younger one do? You told me the younger one pointed a gun at you and let you go. Sherry has completely shut down. Now, when she's asked about the story that she's repeated for years, or the new tale of the younger female of the two suspects pointing a gun at her, and if it's true, Sherry says that she doesn't know. What was a fact only 40 minutes ago is now an uncertainty. Her ship has now completely sunk into the cold waters of justice. That's what you said. She let me go. And you let yourself go. <laughs> you let yourself out of the backseat. Never even said bye to James. Never a thank you, never a nothing. Just an out. No. Yeah, that's what James told me. Until you can start telling me that James is a liar and start pointing things out, James passed a polygraph. This is my fault. It's my fault that I was fucking James. It's my fault that I was flirting with other men. It was such a stupid thing to do. Was, I love my husband. Flirting with I love my children. That's it's understandable. Just Here's the deal though, Sherry. Flirting with other men, not a crime. <laughs> Lying to me today, yes, a crime. Big difference. Telling your story of what happened to you isn't a crime. And I know you're scared of what Keith is going to say and do, what's going to happen with you and your family. Those are real concerns. But we also need to understand the truth. And you're in the best position to give us that. You keep saying that it can't be him. The DNA doesn't lie. It's him. You were talking and to him. now's the opportunity for you to tell us. I was talking to him. I was talking to him. And we've talked. We started about... talking again when his brother died. Okay. You started talking sense. again and what? When her brother died. Oh, sure. And that makes sense. The problem we have is the actions after the talking, after the flirting. There was a big difference between talking on the phone and getting in a car with somebody. So are, are you saying that James got two females to, to kidnap you? Is that what you're trying to say? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? So if James's DNA is on you, I don't know. are you, so either, either we're still saying the younger girl pointed a gun at you, or we're saying we don't know. You've already told me that today. That a younger girl pointed a gun at you. You said you didn't want her to get caught. So are we still talking that the female let you go? That's where we're at. And and I don't know doesn't add clarity. On simple questions, Sherry. A very a very easy question. Did James pick you up? You told me earlier that a girl pointed a gun at you. Is that, is that detail, which one's true? It's only one. Only one of those are true, Sherry. You've told both of them. I've told one, you've told the other. Which one's true? Does James need to go to jail for all this stuff that you asked him to do? For this. No, nobody asked for this. I, Sherry, I believe you. Nobody asked for this. So nobody asked for ABC News to park out in your driveway. There was no way you could have predicted that this was going to blow up and to be as big as it was. Not even God thought it was going to turn into this big. Even when he first got the call, he didn't think that CNN and ABC and everybody was going to care. I'm going to find Sherry in a couple of days because I, I found Don and I found I found the people you were some of the people you were talking to. I've never known about your work cell phone. Stupid. But but we're beyond we're beyond that stupid. small discretion. Stupid. We've talked about that discretion. No. We've talked about Donovan, right? Remember? So stupid. We talked about Donovan. So stupid. Who picked you up? Was it James or was it a female that pointed a gun at you? Can you please answer that? You're shaking your head now. I so, will not get. I. I. No, I'm not. I'm not talking to you about that. I'm, I'm not going to get anybody in trouble. I've told you before. I do not want anyone to get in trouble. Well, you're going to get I, yourself in trouble at this point. That's where we're at. So either either James. I didn't picked, do anything wrong. I know you didn't do anything wrong. Right now, you're not telling the truth, which is doing something wrong. That's where we're at. 
James put himself on a polygraph. Talked to FBI agents. He talked with Peter and I for six hours. He told us everything, Sherry. You told us so many truths because you put yourself through. They were true. You were absolutely right. You don't want to talk about the women. Sherry doesn't want to talk about the women that she talked about for the last four years or repeat her claims from less than an hour ago. Sherry went from being crystal clear on the younger suspect pointing a gun at her to now having no idea. Further down the water, she goes. So, but the, the one... <laughs> You're saying that it's James. No, I'm We're not. saying James's DNA was on you. We know you were, you were in that room at his house. Then it was so the, the woman. Then it was the woman. Well, okay. the, 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 the That's woman. why we're asking did, you. It was the woman. woman. Put a point of gun at you and put you in the car, yes or no? Is that where we're at? I don't remember. You don't remember if a female pointed a gun at you and put you in the car? Is that what you're saying, Sherry? I've always told you I don't remember getting in the car. I've always no. told you I don't remember getting in the car. Right. But did a female point a gun at you, yes or no? <laughs> yes or no? So I don't remember anything. You've already told me that today. You know who she is. I know you do. No, it was always you Keith. You know who she is. Yo, know the lady we showed you is another raid. <laughs> no, I know James opened the door for you. Whether you want to forget how you got in the car, I'm I'm okay with that. But we've already you've already established today. That's why I asked you today. <laughs> what did the younger girl do? You said she let me go and she pointed a gun at me. We didn't talk about how you got in the car. Right now I'm asking you, did a younger female point a gun at you, yes or no? What? I know you know who she is. I am we're, not we're saying it. I don't want her to get in trouble. She's not I getting know in trouble. you know who she is. You're getting in trouble. I am not. I didn't do anything. Right. But right now, ask, answer this one question. Did a female point a gun at you, yes or no? I am done speaking to you until I talk to a lawyer. I will not arrest her. I am with my children because of her. Sherry does the second smart thing that she's done since the interview began, and she firmly says that she will not speak anymore without a lawyer. The investigators immediately end the interview and escort Sherry out, but the damage is already done. I'm disappointed, Sherry. I agree. Sherry, if you want to talk to your attorney, that's fine. We can wrap this up. If you want to keep talking to us, that's a separate story. But you said you wanted to talk to your attorney. So I guess from the beginning, you're free to go and you can go. I would ask you one more question, just for your own welfare. Do you feel like harming yourself? For your welfare. Do you feel like harming yourself? No, I just want to hug my children and go home. Okay. Well, you're free to go and do that. If you change your mind and want to come forward and talk to us. This is all my fault because I talk to other men. This cannot be. As the threat to Sherry leaves the room, which in this case is the detective's, She is immediately able to sit upright, stop crying, and speak clearly. It's almost as if she was putting on an act, just like she was for the last four years, and just like she was for her entire life, hiding the truly despicable person that she is behind the public mask of honorability and meekness. The detectives find Keith and bring him back in to finish the interview. You might have come and started talking to you. Around the whole time. <laughs> no, there's not. It's still, you can't tell you a lot, honestly. I don't know what I told Kettle to let you know. 
some of the details, some of the stuff coming out. Can you, I mean, from my side, I feel like, my, you know, my whole world's going to flip upside down again. Why, why is that, why am I always getting held out of things? Like, why can't you just hit me with it? <laughs> I did, I told you. I know, yeah. Because this happened Monday. We're, we're no, Monday. you're saying you can't tell me all this stuff. Uh, it's still an ongoing investigation, so yeah. you're not going to find out answers. I mean, there's okay. just, that's Obviously, the way it is. Can you help me get throw me a bone and then go, I mean, she made it up. Is that where we're going, right? Or is she trying to come up with a whole other thing? We're not going to give you any additional details. <laughs> Obviously, you've heard the questions, so you can yeah. read through some of those and yeah. understand. You've seen some of the photos. Yeah. So you know some of the investigators. Well, obviously, you saw me. I was like, "Yeah, we found him." <laughs> and we did. Yeah. But you can also notice your reaction compared to her reaction. Yeah. No, hundred percent. That's what I'm saying from my side. But now, now you're telling me, "Okay, you guys can go home now." Well, do you oh. think I want her anywhere around my kids or around me at all at this point? And again, we, we've <laughs> talked a lot. I don't know what the next stages of this are. That's it's, why it's not that's us why together. I right? that one. <laughs> whatever, whatever those decisions are, I don't, I don't know. But from a, we can all agree that she's not all there then obviously if somebody can do something like that to their body and try to trick everybody that they're probably not fit to it was four years ago we can't get into that now. but i would say obviously we are concerned about the welfare we don't want any kind of domestic dispute between you two we also don't want so give me a quick legal not legal advice give me it from a sheriff if i don't want her in my house tonight what options do i have you have to get restraining orders you have to get legal stuff I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell her she has to go to her sister's or something. I mean, she's not going to my house tonight, and I got a call. The next stage of this, please give me the courtesy of telling me when you're gonna announce this, so I cannot be at my home. And Probably sure. tonight. Oh God, damn, you're going quick. We well, I thought you said it's ongoing now. Well, we have to. We, we gotta talk about that, but it's gonna happen quick. I understand. He was thinking tomorrow. I was like, okay, we'll up time everybody to... in LA. So there's a there's a hornet's nest in LA. Mm -hmm. It only takes one person to go and say, "Hey, I know it actually happened. I want ten grand." And now they run to LA news. Uh, yeah. It blows up without our control. Yeah. So and I don't know the strategy. We we still have to. Have, we had to get through this before we can get there. But this. Did is there anything you can tell me next? I thought you said you were going to tell me something when I came back in. Like, oh. the, the person that we talked to down there mm -hmm. is absolutely involved. No, yeah, I know that. Everything. I know that. So I've heard that's giving you guys that guy's number, so that, but, I thought. I thought. So that's that's where we're at. Okay. Um, and then what she said. We're just gonna ask you to be patient. Let it play out. I know it's gonna be really hard, but it also I, makes it easier for you. Do, well, the little kids aren't gonna ask you as much as the media will. No, I and understand. family members, your own family members, no, and I you can look at them with a straight face and say, "Look, they're not telling me yet." But like. Even Kettle right now, I was like, well, shoot, you guys can give her a ride in the house. I don't even want her in my car right now. I don't know what Kettle said. Oh, mm -hmm. That's what he told me. So. <laughs> I'm assuming we'll get arranged for her to get there if that's what has to happen. Because I need, I need to make some phone. If, I mean, if you're going to release it that soon, I'd like to call her. I don't know what's going to happen. I can call you today. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go from this to another meeting, and that means I'll lead to another meeting, and that means I'll lead to another meeting, and then, then we'll be figuring stuff out. Are you saying you want us to help you with transport for her? I get back think so. House? I don't think I'm, I mean, I, you got to give me a couple. So I thought you guys were going to call me back in here with her. So. Well, she has to leave, so oh. she's free to leave okay. if she wants. So I think we'll talk, and I'm going to, we'll probably, she's probably not going to talk in here, so we'll probably go out to the car, and then I'll be like, I'm not going anywhere with you until I'm here. If you guys want to check out the car and come back up and tell us if you need assistance, okay. yeah. let us know. You have my name. I appreciate that. I think I'm handling pretty good. Any punching walls or nothing? Well, yeah, I'm we in appreciate shock. that. I'm in shock. <sighs> okay. Since Sherry wasn't under arrest, she was free to leave. Keith, of course, was also able to leave. It's unclear what happened between the couple immediately after, but what is clear is the eventual aftermath. Almost a year and a half after this questioning, on March 3rd, 2022, Sherry was arrested on charges of making false statements to federal law enforcement officers and for mail fraud. Papini was charged with mail fraud as she had received over $30,000 from the California Victims' Compensation Board between 2017 and 2021. One week later, on March 9th, 2022, Sherry was released from jail before her trial on a $120,000 bond and after surrendering her passport. She and her lawyer had no comment on the allegations against her. 
Papini had faced up to 25 years in prison between the charges of mail fraud and for lying to a federal officer. On April 18th, 2022, six weeks after her initial arrest, Sherry signed a deal with prosecutors via Zoom, admitting that she had orchestrated the hoax. Keith and Sherry remained married until two days after Sherry's plea deal. On April 20th, 2022, Keith Papini filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences after their 12-year marriage. Keith requested full custody of their now nine-year-old and seven-year-old daughter, and he asked the court to allow visitation with their mom only with his approval and with supervision. Even after everything had initially come to light, Keith remained by Sherry's side until there was an absolute zero chance that she was telling the truth. According to court records, the divorce is scheduled to be finalized on October 31st, 2022. In September 2022, Sherry Papini was sentenced to 18 months in prison and fined $300,000. At the time of this video, Sherry Papini is currently incarcerated at the Shasta County Jail in Redding, California, awaiting her transfer to a California State Correctional Institute, where she will remain for the rest of her sentence.